Today's video is all about one of my favorite cameras I own and one of the cameras I consider the best value for YouTubing and vlogging. This camera is five years old. It was released in October of 2016 and I still consider it one of the best values, if not the best value, for a vlogging YouTube camera in 2021. The camera, of course, that I'm talking about is the Panasonic Lumix G85. This camera initially cost $1,000 when it was released in October of 2016, but today you can pick up one with the 12 to 60 millimeter lens kit for $699 or less. $699 is an incredible deal for all this camera offers. In fact, I still find myself using it quite often this video will be filmed on this camera in its entirety. In fact, I'm talking to this camera right now. So I'm not gonna go through all the specs that this camera offers, but I will go through a few of them. One of them that's very important is it offers 4K video at a 100 megabit bit rate. You can go all the way up to 4K 30 frames per second. In addition, it offers 1080p all the way up to 60 frames per second. Now, most importantly, when it comes to vlogging and walking around with this camera, this does offer the five axis in body stabilization, which is really important when you're moving around with this camera. In addition, a lot of the lenses that you can use with this camera also have their own image stabilization. When you combine those two stabilizations, it's actually quite impressive what this camera is capable of. Also, one of the most important features on this camera is it does have a three inch LCD that's fully articulating. What this means is you can rotate that screen all the way around so that you can see yourself on the screen. This is really important when you're vlogging and talking to the camera. You need to be able to see what that camera is seeing. If you're in an inside studio, it's not as big of a deal because you can always hook up a monitor to most cameras, but it's still a great feature even when talking to the camera indoors. There are a lot of great cameras out there that do not offer the articulating display. That's always been one of my frustrations with a lot of the Sonys and a lot of the Fujis and some other ones. Or if they do offer that articulating display, you have to pay at least twice as much as this camera cost. Now in recent years, some companies have offered ones that have that. However, these cameras are more like a point and shoot in that they have a single lens that's attached to it without the ability to swap out the lens. The Sony ZV-1 comes to mind. I've used that camera before and liked it, but it cost more than this camera currently, and it had this single lens. You were not able to swap out the lens. Now the successor to the Sony ZV-1 does now feature a camera where you can swap out the lens, but the cost for that camera is much higher than this Panasonic G85. This camera does offer 16 megapixel photos, and it is of course a micro four thirds sensor. Now if you don't know what micro four thirds is, this is simply describing the sensor type that's in the camera. This is one of the three most common types, for mirrorless cameras. You have full frame, you have the APS-C cropped sensor, and then you have the micro four thirds. Now it is important to note that the micro four thirds is the smallest of those three sensors. So some things to keep in mind is the low light performance is not going to be as good with this camera as it would be with the APS-C or with the full frame. The full frame is still going to be best in low lighting. So if you're using this camera in low lighting, you're gonna see some stabilization issues. And uh, if you have to turn up the ISO, there's gonna be more noise with this type of sensor. But if you're vlogging in good lighting, or if you're using it in an indoor studio like I am right now, that's not really an issue because you can have sufficient lighting where that's not going to create a problem. It's also important to note that the Lumix G85 body is splash proof and dust proof. This is a great feature of this camera. This means you can have it outdoors around water. And as long as you don't drop the camera in the water or anything like that, if it gets splashed a little bit or rained on a little bit, it's gonna be fine. It's not gonna break the camera. Another advantage of this camera is micro four thirds lenses tend to be quite affordable. There are a lot of great options out there in the micro four thirds category. And for instance, the lens I'm using right now is a Lumix 25 millimeter with F1.7. F1.7 is great. It gives you that nice background bokeh and blur. Now, of course, this lens I'm using right now would not be great for vlogging because you would have to have the camera held really far back because a 25 millimeter lens on a micro four thirds sensor, it's going to be the equivalent to 50 millimeter on a full frame. This lens in particular is great for a lot of photography use cases too. Like if you're doing portraits of people, it's great for that type of use case. This camera does also take some pretty good photos. So it's not just great for YouTubing and vlogging. It is also great for photography. And again, the affordability of this camera is really its highest selling point. This camera offers a lot for 699. 
And I will note that lately on Amazon, I've seen some open box like new G85s going for the upper 500s. That is an even greater price if you can pick one up for that. I highly recommend this camera if you're just starting out with vlogging or just starting out a YouTube channel. It'll get you some great 4K quality footage that you can then share in 4K or downscale to 1080p for extra good 1080p. And let's be honest, even though this camera has 8-bit 4K footage, compared to other cameras that cost three or four times this amount at least, will your audience be able to tell or will they care? Are they going to care if the 4K footage was filmed on a $699 camera or a $6,000 camera? Ultimately, if you're producing great content, that's going to be what your audience cares about. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take this camera outside and we're gonna do some further testing and I'm gonna share some more thoughts that I have on this camera. Let's take it outside. It is really hot out here today, but it's a great sunny day to take this camera out in a test. I'm just holding this camera here. Uh, no other special stabilization other than the dual in body stabilization going on here. And I've currently got the 12 to 60 millimeter kit lens on. And I've got this in 12 millimeter, so it'll give the widest angle possible lens for walking and talking to the camera. 12 millimeter, of course, would be 24 millimeter equivalent on the Micro Four Thirds sensor. There are a lot of bugs out today. They definitely like the shade on days like today. I am getting eaten alive in here right now, but great place to test this out. I'm uh, doing a little bit of rotation here to get some differences in the lighting to see how this camera does. No ND filter on at present. I'm actually looking for a snapping turtle down in this area. I've seen one on this trail before, and he is a big snapper. He would make a great subject for this video, but unfortunately I'm not seeing him right now. Every time I see him, I feel like I'm looking at a dinosaur, something from a prehistoric era. Just does not look like something you would see in the year 2021 roaming the earth. If I ever do find him and I have my video camera, I'll make sure to get some footage from a distance, of course. I'll use my uh, 60 millimeter on this. That'll get some uh, nice close-ups of him without being too close. To conclude, I definitely recommend checking out the Panasonic Lumix G85. This camera was released five years ago and it cost a thousand at the time, but now it's 699. For 699, you're getting a lot of camera. It's a great camera starting off if you're vlogging or if you're filming in an indoor YouTube studio. It is more than powerful enough to do those things for you and to do them well. And you have a great lineup of lenses to choose from. You've got great stabilization, so if you're on the move, you can have the camera relatively steady. And if you want to, of course, there are several gimbals or external stabilizers you can mount the camera on. Uh, DJI makes a great one. I'll link to that below. I'll also link to this camera in the description, as well as some of the lenses that I currently have and that I recommend for this. If you have any questions, definitely let me know love to talk about camera gear, and I love to talk about best values with camera gear. There's a lot of great camera gear out there, but what I'm looking for is the camera gear that gives me the most bang for the buck. And that's the stuff I wanna talk about with you here. This may not be my primary camera in the studio, but when I have a shoot where I need multiple cameras, or when I'm out and about outdoors, if I'm not using my GoPro, this is my go-to camera. This camera, I'm not as worried about breaking it if I'm doing something that could break it, due to the cost being significantly lower than some of my other cameras. 
And this camera also just makes a great one. It's a great size. It's not too heavy. It's not too big and bulky. Most of the lenses are reasonably sized as well. So it's really just a great all around outdoor camera. I love using it outside and I definitely recommend it for that purpose as well. Even if you are experienced, it's a great B camera.